Hello everyone, my name is Shahad Al-Bayani, I'm a radiology resident at the University of Arizona in Tucson, and I'm going to talk about the role of MR imaging in accurate diagnosis of primary peritoneal serous carcinoma. There is no conflicts of interest to disclose. I'll start with a quick introduction of primary peritoneal carcinoma. It's basically peritoneal thickening and omental masses without evidence of primary source of tumor in the ovaries or GI tract. It has identical CT and MR findings to metastatic serous ovarian carcinoma. It's most common in postmenopausal women with no prior history of malignancy, and most of the patients are diagnosed in advanced stages of the disease. The size of symptoms and the symptoms are very unspecific. They can present with abdominal pain, distension, ascites, weight loss, or bowel obstruction. So I'll talk about the gynecology oncology group criteria to diagnose primary peritoneal serous carcinoma. First, the ovaries must be either absent or normal in size. And the extra ovary and sites involvement is greater than the involvement of the surface of either ovary. Ovaries are not associated with the tumor and demonst or demonstrate only serosal or cortical invasions with dimensions smaller than 5 by 5 millimeters. Histopathological characteristics of the tumor are predominantly of the serous type. The pathological features include papillary clusters of malignant cells with, this, with eccentric nuclei and numerous samoma bodies, and histologically it's similar to high-grade serous ovarian carcinoma. So on this slide, I'm showing you the correlation of findings between the MR and the pathological findings. So on the MR, there is diffuse enhancement of the peritoneum with thickening and omental implants. And the pathological picture is showing large cells with large ovoid nuclei and irregular contour that's consistent with serous carcinoma. This is the same patient, and it shows diffuse omental thickening with heterogeneous enhancement uh, these consistent with omental implants. On the pathological picture, you can see the samoma bodies. These are dark, purple, calcified bodies with sheets of foamy macrophages. This case is showing the CT imaging features of primary peritoneal carcinoma. There's thickening of the omentum with heterogeneous attenuation in the anterior omentum that's suggestive of omental caking. Here's another case. This is 56-year-old female with abdominal distension. On the uh, top row, this is the CT findings, which shows ascites and peritoneal thickening. And these findings are better assessed on the bottom row MR images, where you can see enhancing peritoneal nodularity and the extension of the disease with omental caking. This is, these findings are consistent with primary peritoneal serous carcinoma. So the diagnostic imaging features of primary peritoneal carcinomatosis is peritoneal thickening and nodularity, omental caking, malignant ascites. It has heterogeneous appearance on the CT. Um, and it's better assessed and characterized on the MR, where it shows low signal on T1 and heterogeneous enhancement following contrast administration. And there must be no evidence of primary ovarian or GI malignancy. So we'll start to go through a couple of cases to show you how primary peritoneal disease would look like. This is a 62-year-old female with abdominal pain. On the CT images, there is ascites, and there is ill-defined nodular thickening. This is better characterized on the adjacent MR images, and you can see that the tumor restrict diffusion on the DWI sequence, and it does show enhancement on the dynamic images. These features favor primary peritoneal serous carcinoma rather than peritoneal carcinomatosis, given there is no evidence of other primary tumor in this postmenopausal woman. Here is another case in postmenopausal women with a weight loss. There is nodular peritoneal thickening and ascites in the pelvis. These are better characterized on the MR images. There is enhancement of this nodular thickening, which is seen on the um, post-contrast images. There is no evidence of tumor in the ovaries. So they find these findings consistent with primary peritoneal serous carcinoma. Another case, this is 53-year-old female who had a history of primary peritoneal carcinomatosis. She status post-amnitectomy and chemotherapy. On the CT, there is like a hypodense lesion adjacent to the spleen, which is better characterized on the MR images. It does show internal hemorrhage, and it does show enhancement on the dynamic images. This is consistent with metastatic implant. Here's another case of 64-year-old female with abdominal pain. I'm using the arrows to help you identify the findings. There's sheet-like thickening of the greater omentum seen with nodular peritoneal thickening. There is heterogeneously enhancing soft tissue on the dynamic images post-contrast administration. You can also see that the tumor restricts diffusion on the DWI sequence. These findings are consistent with primary peritoneal serous carcinoma and the patient had no evidence of other primary tumor. Here's another case, 61-year-old female with abdominal distension. These images are showing peritoneal and, om and omental tumor infiltrate with peritoneal thickening and nodular component. 
a primary ovarian neoplasm was not identified, this primary diagnostic consideration is primary peritoneal serous carcinoma. This is 56-year-old female with increasing abdominal fullness. Uh, the CT image is showing ascites and diffuse peritoneal nodularity. It's better characterized on the MR images where it's showing omental caking, enhancing omental masses, and peritoneal thickening. The primary consideration is primary serous tumor given there's no known history of prior malignancy. 58-year-old female um, with shortness of breath and abdominal distension. There is nodular enhancement and of the omentum and ascites on the CT images. The extent of the disease, however, is better assessed on the dynamic MR images, as you can see. There is no primary tumor was found in the ovary, and imaging findings favor primary peritoneal serous carcinoma. This is 61-year-old female. As you notice, all these patients are postmenopausal. So the axial CT is showing ill-defined nodular thickening, which is better characterized on the MR images. There is diffuse smooth nodular enhancement on the post-contrast images. This is consistent with primary peritoneal serous carcinoma, given no evidence of primary tumor was found in the ovaries as well. So primary peritoneal serous carcinoma accounts for 15% of ovarian epithelial carcinomas and it almost always occurs in postmenopausal women. It's identical to metastatic serous ovarian carcinoma on histology and can be difficult diagnosis to make. MRI is both more specific and sensitive than CT. The accurate diagnosis by MRI can save time and resources by preventing an extensive workup looking for another primary tumor. It also gives answer for the patient and allows the clinician to plan for the best course of treatment. Thank you very much.